Amen. Praise God. Praise God. That's right. That's right. To God be the glory. Amen. Let everything and everybody who has breath praise ye the Lord. Why? Because he's worthy to be praised. Yes, he's worthy to be praised. Amen. And uh, we're going to turn it over into the hand of our choir. And after, it'll be in the hands of our worship leader this morning, Denise, Sister Denise. Amen. Let's give God another hand clap of praise. Amen. Praise the Lord, all ye saints. Let's all give God a, a wave, a hand, a stand, whatever you have in your body. So everything that you have, you have to give it up to the Lord our God because the worship does not belong to you. So we can do this thing. This is not a spectator sport, but this is all participation. Everybody has to participate in it. Somebody said, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. Oh, people, people. 
people, people from every nation and come to Jenna. Morning, Grace. Morning. I will now be doing the prayer. So, can we all stand, please? Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day. Thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you for our families. Thank you for the gift of life, Lord. We love you so much. We'll always continue to give your name the praise. Thank you for every and all that you do in and out of our lives. And we just wanna say thank you and we praise you. Thank you for our good days and our not so good days. And we just wanna take time to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. will now have our congregational hymn on page 429, Yield Not to Temptation.
Now we will have our responsive scripture by Jordan Van. Number two, blessings on the Lord. Amen. Morning, Grace. Morning. Morning. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having everything, or enough of for everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. Finally, all of you have unity of spirit, sympathy, love for one another, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Together, do not repay evil for evil or abuse for abuse, but on the contrary, repay with a blessing. It is for this that you were called, that you might inherit a blessing. Amen. Amen. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Amen. These are our announcements. Monday, April 15th at 6 o'clock, male choir rehearsal, 7 inspirational choir rehearsal. Wednesday, April 17th, uh, 7 o'clock, Wednesday, Bible study. Friday, April 26, uh, 7 p.m. Women's Ministry Meeting. Uh, Saturday, April 27th, Rising Star Bowling Event at Bolero Norwalk from 1 to 2.30. This event is free for all registered K-12 Rising Star students. Amen. Amen. See flyer for additional information. The Missionary Ministry is requesting your support for the upcoming CSNBC Annual Women's Retreat and Shoe Rally Fundraiser. Please see the flyers in the back narthex or any member of the missionary. On Saturday, May 11th, there will be a Mother's Day weekend gospel brunch, a trip uh, to New York City featuring the world famous Harlem Gospel Choir. Please see the flyer for more information. information. Uh, the 120th session of the Connecticut State Missionary Baptist Convention will convene for May 6th through May 8th at the Sheridan Hotel South in Rocky Hill, Connecticut. Please visit the website, uh, www.ctbaptist.com for additional information. Please note that the annual banquet will be held on Wednesday, May 8th at 6 p.m. Contact Deacon Rosa Murray for banquet ticket information. Uh, save the date, June 1st, 2024, missionary training workshop. Everyone in, is invited to attend. And also we have with an announcement, um, Mary, Marilyn Maitland and Sister Marino uh, if Mary Maitland is here, she can come and give that announcement. Okay, and then Marina. Okay, and then we'll digress to our pastor. <laughs> Amen. Yes, good morning, church. I just want to... Uh, although it's on the on the board, I just want to let everybody let it sink in about the annual um, the the convention. 
is the 116th annual session of the Women of the Convention Auxiliary will be held um, in Cromwell in, at the state capital, Rocky Hill, on the 7th of, of May. We are, the, the cost to go is $45, and I will be putting a flyer on the board outside on the back where you, each one can sign up whoever who wants to go because we have to send this in as quickly as possible because there's a luncheon. The presidential luncheon is that day, and so therefore we would like all the delegates, whoever would like to go, to sign this, to fill out the paperwork so that we can get, get it to them on time. Okay, so it's the 116th session of the Women's Auxiliary, and this is a presidential luncheon that's going to be held that day. Amen. So we would like you to, I would like everyone to participate. Good morning, Grace. Real quick, I wanted to give you an update on our Mother's Day weekend concert and brunch um, in New York City. I did get a really good response last week, so if you said you wanted to go, I'm starting to collect the monies. If you said yes, uh, $50, that's your ticket and your transportation. If you said maybe, that meant maybe yes, maybe no. Please see me after service today so I know whether to keep your name on the list or not because I had quite a few maybes and everybody won't fit. <laughs> so if you want to change your maybe to a yes, definitely see me. And if you want to change your maybe to a no, let me know that as well so I can let the next person in line know that there um, would be a seat available. And then if you did not talk to me, Come see me at church so I can add you to the list. But we are excited about our trip on May 11th. Um, I look forward to seeing many of you there, and I hope to see many of you um, immediately after service so we can wrap things up. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I don't have any um, jelly beans to give you, but the energy level is a little low. So if I had some jelly beans, I could you know, maybe prep, prep you up a little bit. So let's try this. God is good. All the time. And all the time. Give him some praise, y'all. Give him some praise. Amen, amen. I want to add to Sister Maitland's um, announcement. Uh, the tickets are $70, I mean, if I'm correct, $75. But what we've always done here at Grace is that we have subsidized a part of that, amen? because really and truly who go to the luncheons are our um, older members, our seniors. And so I didn't want them to have to fit, foot the bill all by themselves. So the church picks up a, por a portion of that. So the tickets, that's why the tickets are $45 to you. Amen? Okay, I guess I messed that up. Say it again. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. For, I'm talking about the banquet, amen. But for the president's luncheon, that's on you. <laughs> that's the bottom line, amen. <laughs> I, um, I um, greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we have a, a wonderful baby to dedicate today, and we'll do that just prior to offering. We'll lift up um, this child unto the Lord, I want to, um, again, encourage each of you who are members of this church, don't make just Sunday morning your work. Amen. Throughout the week, find a ministry, get in it. Uh, we're going to be, um, our missionary ministry has always been functioning quite well. They've asked for some additional um, instruction, so we'll be doing that. You'll hear more about that later. But we do, I do encourage you to be um, a part of our convention. Um, the convention has been around a long time. And um, not just when I was president, but because this church, Grace Baptist, is a charter member of our convention, we should always, it doesn't matter who the president is and, or anything like that, we should be very active. We are a leading church in this state. 
and I want us to be a part of the convention. Amen? Amen. 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 At least I got one. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, God bless you. God keep you. I don't think I have anything else. There is, I'm in communication um, with the Norwalk Community Health Center. Um, there is a new um, shot that is out that covers this um, COVID and several others. It's the latest. Um, I'm going to, we're going to have the band come here at some point. I'm just telling you this in preparation. Um, and we're going to have the band come and sit out here and give us our shots. Amen? Um, if you didn't get a COVID shot, then I'm, and you're still here, to God be the glory. But there are so many who were anti-vaccine that have died and gone on to glory. Um, and why take the risk? Why take the risk? You know, when I'm driving and I drive um, in a 45 mile an hour zone and I do 60, if I get the ticket, that's on me. But if you continue to play with this COVID, you are playing dangerously, especially if you have other issues in your life. Amen. So I said to the folks over at the Norwalk Health, um, if they would be so kind to bring the shot to us. And he said, yes, he would be happy to do that. So you'll hear more about that as we, in the next couple of weeks. Amen? Amen. I think that's all I have. Um, thank you, choir. Um, I was told that we had about three young people that were going to represent. She's going to represent by herself? Oh, man, come on. I want to hear this. Amen. Are we sure about that? Are we sure about that? Yeah, we sure about we that. We sure about that? Okay. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's bless the Lord. You know, God is a good God, amen? You know, I feel good today. You know what? I had a crook in my neck yesterday. Yeah, I was like, I, I was. But look here, y'all. Want me to do it? Yes, he will. Yes, he will. He will do it. Yes, he will. Did y'all see Sister Deborah dancing last week? Won't he do it? Come on, somebody. Won't he do it? Praise God. Praise God. We serve a good God, y'all. We serve a good God. Amen. I asked the choir this morning, and I say, look down at your feet. Did you walk in here today? Yes. Look at, did you have food on your table this morning? Yes. We serve a good God. The praise be to God. Amen. We're going to ask you guys, are you happy? Y'all see I'm happy, right? But are you happy? Somebody give me a big smile. You know? Amen. We're going to ask our baby to come in. Somebody, DR, come on, come on, come on, Christina. Come on, we're going to, come on, Christina. You're going to help her. If you're happy, you know, we're going to help this baby sing the song. Is that all right, y'all? And we're going to make her feel at home. We're going to make her feel good. There she is. Isn't she so pretty?
Amen. This is why I said, are you sure? Yeah, yeah, I've been, you know, she tried, she tried. Amen. We have quite a few that are out on um, spring break. So we had planned to have our youth choir, youth voices this morning. And the text, I was told, well, we only, well, Pastor, we have three. And I said, well, let's go with the three. And so the three became one. You did beautiful, baby. You did beautiful. Amen. I want to, um, a couple things before we dedicate this child to God. Um, I want to thank Ike, chairman of our trustee ministry, for his efforts this week and others. I think Bob Stewart and, and some others. Um, we had some mechanical problems here at the church that our restrooms were not available. And so I didn't want anybody to come into church trying to find out where to go. And that's why we canceled Wednesday night. Um, but he stayed on this all week long. And um, yeah, I, I just believe in recognizing publicly um, your continued hard work. You know, there are a lot of folk that sit in the balcony, per se, in the stadium box seats. And they say what should happen, and they want to point fingers and do this and do that. Uh, and then there are those who get it done. And thank you, Ike. Thank you very much. Amen. Um, the question has been raised, and I, we were, Rosa, um, Deacon Murray and I, Rosa Murray, and I have been working on this for a long time. When I announced our Christian Leadership School, I told you the truth that we were certified. Um, the convention leadership called Nashville and had us decertified. Yeah, and I wanna be honest with you about that. Um, and, um, and I haven't been as kind as I need to be with the leadership because he does not pastor this church. And there is no requirement that says from the national, that says there can only be one Christian leadership school in the state. Um, we helped start the Christian leadership school. More importantly, we did start the um, Southern Satellite School, the one that we had here. Uh, we had more students than they had up north. And so um, I'm still fighting that battle. I approached um, Nashville, um, Dr. Davis, is it? Is it Jackson. Jackson. I approached him at the mid year, no, at the board meeting, and gave him a few kind words. How disappointed I am at that. So, y'all stay tuned. I'm not, I haven't given up on it. And uh, we don't want to get into this business of suing our own people. But um, this was so disappointing. But I do think that you deserved an explanation because I talked about this quite a bit. Um, I'm trying to see what's over there, but nonetheless, <laughs> amen. Oh God, I love my people, amen. I love my people. Um, God bless you, but I wanted to give you that, that um, update, amen? Amen. amen. Um, we have a, we're gonna do this right now, all right? All right, mainly because I can't wait. I'm excited about this. I tell you, one of the privileges that you have as a pastor is um, dedicating children to the Lord. Let me give an explanation a little bit because we have some visitors. Um, we as a Baptist church, we do not christen babies um, as in our um, Catholic brothers and sisters. But what we do in place of christening, uh, in other words, we don't baptize infants. We believe that each individual should be able to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior for themselves. And until such time, uh, which is generally around eight or nine years old, um, 
a child is able to confess that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior, uh, we do dedicate and lift them up to the Lord. And we do this in, as an example of what Jesus did himself. When the disciples uh, would bring the children to him, well, the disciples would try to keep them, the children from him. He said, suffer the little children. In other words, allow the little children to come unto me. It is his compassionate nature that Jesus would do that. And so likewise, it is our compassionate nature. Would you bring Logan forth? Yes, yes, yes. Huh? All right. Yes. I know what I, I know why I messed up. We're giving you Madison's, I mean, um, Logan's certificate. Madison. I have a granddaughter named Madison. Amen. And she's a handful. <laughs> Madison, Athena, Morris. Amen. Hey, Mom and Dad. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, Godparents, please. I'm sorry. Godparents, please come.
Amen. That was good. That was good. Now we have our tithes and offerings. And um, that'll be two baskets. Is that the middle? Okay. Trustees will be the general election. Um, deacons will do the. youth, youth offering, amen. Amen, we can stand for some marching music, offering music. Let's lift our offering unto the Lord and stand, please. Most loving and kind God, we lift this offering to you, not out of obligation, but out of love. You told us to bring ye all the tithes 
into the storehouse. And you promised in return that you would bless us mightily. So much so that it would be more than we can store away. You bless us every moment with health. You bless us with kindness and thought. We consider thy works in thy hands and we're so grateful. We want to do this not only financially but give of our talents to be used by you. Bless this congregation and those who decided to give. Won't you receive it in the manner that it was brought with love. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Amen. We give of thee, O thine. All things are Amen. And in that same spirit of prayer, we're going to invite you to pray together um, as a family, as a community, as a society. We're going to ask you come to the altar if you like or sit, but we will ask that you pray together and not be idle in your thoughts but that we talk to our Father. Amen, because prayer works. The greatest conversation we can have is with our Father in heaven. Amen, we talk a lot, but are we talking to God? I don't know about you, but I've learned to talk to God more than anybody. I've learned to talk to God as though he was standing here with me or sitting there with you and he turns to me or he turns to you and he says, what's on your mind? Amen. He hears us, church. He hears our prayers if we're praying to him, our Father. And I love him this morning. I love them this afternoon and I'll love them this evening. And I'm, I am not ashamed of my relationship with God. Amen. I hope the same for you. And I'm praying right now from the very word that came out of my mouth is to our Father. You're just listening. Amen. Because he's a sweet God. He's a loving God. He's a gracious God. He's a merciful God. And I love him this morning. He showed me mercy all week long. Showed me mercy this morning and grace. And mercy is not getting what I deserve. And grace is unmerited favor. And so Father, we just bless you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God for how you kept us this week. We didn't get what we want necessarily, God, but we got what we needed, Father. And so we thank you here this morning, not for a long prayer or words to impress people, Father, but just from the honest part of our hearts, Father. We love you today, God. We ask for your forgiveness. Forgive us, God, for our character, flaws, and defects our shortcomings, God, our coming up short, God. Forgive us for our self-righteousness, God, our arrogance, our greed, our lust, our pride, our envy, our gluttony, God. Forgive us, Father. 
Oh God, forgive us. Lord, forgive us. Lord, that we could forgive others, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, bless those who are disabled, who are in crisis right now, who are homeless, who are on drugs, who are sexually promiscuous, God, who are murderous, God. In the name of Jesus, that person right now, God, that's doing a crime, Father, white collar, blue collar, Lord, but breaking the laws that you put in the land for the lawbreaker, God. Have mercy, Father. Lord, bless us now, Father. Bless us in this worship experience, God, that we could hear from you. Remove any distraction from us, God. Teach us to pray, God. Teach us to talk to you, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Bless our government, the leaders, Lord, of our societies. Lord, make peace in the world, Lord, around the world, Father, where there's wars. Lord, have mercy, Father. Lord, we know you're the same today as you were 2,000 years, God, ago, Lord. We know that you require faith, God. And Lord, we thank you for the troubles that you bring to us, God, because it makes us better. It perfects us. It gives us character. Lord, it gives us strength. It gives us faith, God. It defines us, Father. And so we thank you for the trials and tribulations, God. Pray for our pastor today, God. First Lady, Lord, that you would bless him, God, with the message, God, that you've given to him for us, this waiting congregation, God. Pray for him right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we love you and we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor and praise. Lord, we love you today. We need your presence, Father. We need to hear from you now, God. Beyond our appearances, God. Beyond the we look like we have it together, Father. But you know us on the inside. You know every heart from the baby to the eldest here. Lord, you know all about us, God. Deal with us, God, based on our integrity, God, based on what we do when nobody's around, Father, when no one can see us but you, God. Deal with us, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you now. We thank you for the victory, God. We thank you for the overcoming power to do life today, Father to trust you, God, to make you number one, God. Us being a child of God, that we have many titles, father, mothers, employer, employees, father, black, white, Hispanic, different nationalities, but above all, God, we're children of God in the name of Jesus, Father. And we thank you, God, for your word, we thank you for the scripture from Genesis to Revelation. Pray, God, that we will be more diligent about studying your word. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you today. We bless you, Father. You be glorified. And only you, Father. You said you will share your glory with no man. And Father, we give you the glory today. And we bind the hand of the enemy the kingdom, the king of darkness. We rebuke him in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against your people will prosper. Father, in the name of Jesus and every tongue that rises itself up against your people, you said we shall condemn in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we believe it. We believe it in our souls, Father. Your word, the gospel, of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hey, Messiah. Glory to your name, Father. No weapon. No weapon. Thank you, God, for the victory in this invisible fight. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for strengthening us on the inside where it matters, God, in our hearts and in our spirits, God. We thank you now 
We thank you, Father, and we trust you. We trust you, Father, with it all in the name of Jesus is our prayer this morning, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 forgot where we were in the service. Amen. We'll now have a selection. Y'all mighty quiet this morning, but that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. Amen. We have a selection now from our choir. Amen. Say amen one more time. Amen. This Christian journey is such a long journey. And it seems like so many things get in your way. But along the way, you have to find a comfort zone. And when you find that comfort zone, get in it. You need to know that, you know, Satan don't need to walk in front of you. He, he can lead you where he wants you to go. Neither do he need to walk beside you where he can whisper in your ear. Touch somebody and say, he belongs under your feet. Under your feet. Come on, choir. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. get you down. Oh, when Satan, he blocks your way. Come on, stand right up and say, hallelujah, anyhow. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah, anyhow. Don't let your troubles get you down. Oh, when Satan, he blocks your way, come on and get right up and say, Hallelujah, anyhow. One more time. Hallelujah, anyhow. <laughs> Don't let your troubles get you down. Oh, when Satan, he blocks your way, come on and say, Hallelujah, anyhow, come on, choir. Oh, you ought to try it sometime. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. When I'm down, I shout hallelujah. Trouble in my way. I can shout hallelujah. When I'm burning down, I shout hallelujah. Lord, have your way. I done cried all day. My friends walked away. I shout hallelujah. Early, early in the morning, I'm shouting hallelujah. Around about midday, I can shout hallelujah. Oh, late in the midnight, I shout hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My friends are gone. I'm left all alone. Cried all day. Help come my way. I know the Lord will, I 
know the Lord will. He'll make a way out of no way. Oh, glory. Have you tried him? Church, I tried him. Church, I tried him. And I know he's all right. Anybody tried him? You know he's all right. Oh, hallelujah. Trouble in my home. I shout hallelujah. When my bills are overdue. I just shout hallelujah. One thing that I know, he will make a way out of no way. My God will. Can I get one witness? Can I get one witness? Somebody shout. Somebody shout. My help is on the way. My help is on the way. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Church, I tried him. Church, I tried him. Church, I tried him. And I know it's all right. Church, I tried him. Later in the midnight, and I know it's all right. Can I get another witness? Can I get another witness? Did he wake you up? Suffer on your way. Did he wake you up? In your right mind. Somebody say it. Somebody go on and say it. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Give him high praise. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Can I feel my help coming? Get on in my hands. Get in my feet too. It's all over me. It's all over me. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah, I feel so good, do you know that he's good? God the glory. Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. Before I get into the message today, I want to um, wish our own Jen Hartman, a happy birthday. The 
Lord has given you another year. Amen. Amen. He's just a good God. I also want to recognize the Carlos's deacon and deaconess Carlos. Amen. It's good to see you. Julius, if we could, I, I'm struggling a little bit this morning. And um, you could just do a little bit, the choir, we can just do a little bit of Amazing Grace. I think that would be helpful. Amen. Father, we give you all glory, and we certainly praise you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you shall do. We thank you, God, we're here in this house of worship to give you the glory, to thank you for the days gone by, and to admit that we need you in this very day, let alone the days to come. Give us a clear mind and a clean heart that we may speak to these, your people, as you have instructed me to do. Bless now, Lord. You know what all of us stand in need of. Won't you grant it? Won't you make a way out of no way? Help us to stand when we've done all we can to stand, to, to stand anyhow your mercy and your grace is what we seek in Jesus name amen I want to speak I'm tempted to say briefly but I want to speak to you today from the book of Acts the third chapter verses 12 through 19 it's a little bit long, longer than I wanted, but I didn't know and couldn't cut it out, so I got to give it as it was given. When Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? And why look you so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we made this man 
to walk. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob and the God of our fathers hath glorified his son Jesus, whom he delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the prince of life whom God hath raised from the dead. Wherefore we are witnesses and his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong whom you see and know, yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I will that through ignorance you did it, as did also your fathers. But those things which God before hath showed by the mouth of all of his prophets that Christ should suffer and hath so fulfilled. Repent ye, therefore, and be converted that your sins be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. I want to speak to you for a few moments today. The revelation of restoration. The revelation of restoration. Acts 3, 12, and 19 comes right after Peter and John said these words. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, arise and walk. And he took them by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. This portion of the scriptures, right after the resurrection, reminds me that miraculous healing is available even to a cripple. But in some ways, I want to suggest to you that all of us are crippled. All of us have some anomaly around us. Maybe we can't get the house fixed. The anomaly may be our car won't act right. Family members won't act right as our beloved Sister Henderson says, and we were so happy to celebrate with her last Sunday on her 100th birthday. Cripple, all of us, mentally, emotionally, um, even with a degree of arrogance and narcissism, believing that you're the only one that's right. Amen. I know y'all know some people like that. Crippled because of your own mistakes. Crippled because of your own sins. And shame on you if you say, I know no sin. Because then everyone knows that you are lying. I love this story it takes place by the gate called Beautiful in the city of Jerusalem. It serves for me a transformative power of Jesus Christ. We know of all of his healings. We, we, we know how he fed 5,000. We know how he healed the sick. We didn't even know how he raised Lazarus from the dead. But let us open our minds and our hearts to the word of God as we delve into this passage. First of all, it's a response to miraculous healing. 
I'm so glad that God reminds us through his son, Jesus Christ, that we can be healed. Amen. Amen. So many of us have got so much stuff going on in our heads and in our lives that we are literally crippled by how to solve it all. When at the end of the day, God's got this. Yeah, God's got this. We don't, we don't need to always try to figure it out. Let God handle it. And, 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 and because of the complexities of life, we become crippled. We become like this crippled beggar. The people present in the temple courtyard were utterly astonished in the response to their awe and amazement. Peter addressed them. And can I suggest to you that many of us have some Peter in us? Amen. They were in awe and amazement, and he pointed out that the healing was not of him and John. But the healing was a result of his, their own power and piety, but rather was the work of Jesus Christ, the Holy and Righteous One. He emphasized that faith, and oh, how many times have we talked about faith? How many times have we suggested that faith is our leaning post? Not only our leaning post, but it's our lighthouse. Not only our lighthouse, but it's our wrath, saving us from the wrath of the sea of the raging storms of life. Faith. But what is faith? faith? Faith is simply holding on when you can do nothing else. Come on, church. Faith has gotten us through this far. Faith has helped us to hold on to the rails of life when it's so easy to throw in the towel. Oh, I know it is. I know it is. Folk try to act like everything's okay when they know doggone well it's not okay. But faith helps us to hold on when we literally, not figuratively, literally feel as though we are losing our minds. He emphasized that faith in the name of Jesus has brought about his miraculous act of healing. I like what Peter says because you know, we all know Peter. Peter can be a little bit off. <laughs> he can take matters into his own hands. But Peter says the healing of this beggar did not come from us, but it came from Jesus. He reminds us, folks, where that's in Christ alone that we find our power to transform lives, to transform our own life. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I don't have to wait and lean on other folk. Yeah, because folk sometimes speak with fork and tongue. Amen. Yeah, they, they act like they're with you but they're on you rather than with you. Yeah, y'all know what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about my own experiences. I'm, I'm just crazy enough and bold enough to let you know that it's not always rosy. It's not, I don't care whether you're standing here or standing back there. God knows what you need how you need it, and when you need it. I'll tell you the truth. I've been struggling these last couple of months because honestly, to stand here, Brother Burns, we cannot take this position for granted. We, 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 we can't. We're already in the midst of the targets of others. 
And when you and I and we all mess up, we all misstep, but thank God for faith to hold on when seemingly holding on is an impossibility. This man that sat by the pool of, of the, by the gate called Beautiful in Jerusalem, he had to feel as though, what have I done wrong? How is it that I am sitting here begging for penance? But Peter, John tells him, I don't have anything to give you. And can I tell you, we deacons, all of you, all of us, we stand in front of the people as if we are perfect. Shame on us. Shame on us. I, we all suffer. Can I tell you this, and I, you've heard me say this a million times, that as a young father, I got some guests in here, so they haven't heard it. But as a young father, I wanted to be, I wanted to be father of the decade. <laughs> I really did. I wanted to be, I wanted to be a good dad. Yeah. Um, I had, I had a great grandfather that taught me how to be a man and how to be a father. I watched him. I didn't have, I didn't have children at the time that he, he died, but I knew what I, I had a template to go by. And I wanted to always be a man, not so much without sin, but without reproach. Amen. I wanted to be, I wanted him, mom, grandma, and others, and even my children, I wanted them to be proud of me. But I was leaning on the wrong post. That's what I should have entitled this. God has totally taken me in a different direction. But I was leaning on the wrong post. Whenever you think you've got it all, watch out. I've dug up a few holes in my life where the bottom of the post was rotted. Oh, y'all don't hear me. The bottom of the post was rotted because of the termites in the ground. Can I use that as an example that if we're not careful, there's termites at the bottom of our post. Learn to lean on the right post. Peter and John helped me with this because they said, silver and gold, have I none. The right post is with Jesus Christ. The right post is leaning on him, not wanting or waiting on people to pat you on the back. Because the very ones who will pat you on the back today may take a knife to you tomorrow. Can I just be honest about it? And so our brokenness, if we don't step out on faith and believe that God will handle it, you'll never get healed. You will allow your brokenness to be cancerous and never get well. Hallelujah. Thank you. This is my testimony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's also a revelation of restoration. You've got to be honest enough in your life to know when you haven't done what God has called you to do. And when you do what God has called you to do, he'll work in a miraculous way. Healing. Nothing wrong with me, Reverend. Well, that's what you tell the public. That's what you tell those on the outside. You know, we, 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 we get dressed up and we get fancy as if that's who we are. The kind of car we drive, as if that's who we are. How much money you have in the bank, as this, that's who you are. That's not who you are. You're a child of the king. I met with Hudson this morning, the new members class, 
and we were talking and I was telling him that thank God that God has made and is making ways out of no ways. We don't know what God is really doing in our lives. We don't know whether sometimes we make a right turn or make a left turn. The issue was, is that the right turn? But God knows what he's doing, I'm telling you. He brings these two gentlemen to the gate called Beautiful. And it just so happens, you believe that? <laughs> God operates in order. It wasn't a just so happened. It really wasn't that they came upon this cripple. It wasn't just so happened that they stumbled upon him with the crowd watching to see what they were going to do. The crowd was mystified, was mystified, Morena, at this man who had sat there. He was in his late 40s, and he had been crippled from birth. Y'all don't hear me. He was crippled from birth. He had this, 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 this disease that he had set by day by day, hoping for some help. And when someone finally opens their mouth, and he's looking for healing now, and these two disciples come upon him, and he's asking them for money. Yeah. Sometimes we ask for the wrong thing. Come on, y'all. Sometimes we ask for the wrong thing. We're asking God to deliver us from the storms of life. Well, you don't get well by just walking away. You got to take some medicine. Mama, you said it right too. You got to take your medicine. Matter of fact, she would be so bold and say, come here, take this medicine. She wasn't talking about no Geritol or nothing. She was talking about putting the rod to my behind, amen. Brokenness. But, 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 but here's what we get that is mystifying to me, that through our brokenness, God knows how to help us to escape. Yeah. It's painful. It's painful. Amen. Well, I remember when I broke my leg just, just above the ankle, and they took that cast off. And I thought, Jesse, I was going to get up and run. No way. My leg had atrophied. And so what I learned from that, that while that brokenness was healing, I wasn't able to just jump up and run. It took time. I'm talking to somebody here, not just to me. It, it took time for me to be healed so that I could run again. But guess what? Metaphorically, running is in my future. <laughs> running for all of us is in our future. We don't have to give up. But all we got to do is hold on. Talking about faith. All we got to do is say, Lord, you take it. You do what you will with it. Isn't that what they said to him? Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. Thank God I know him. More importantly, he knows me. I don't know about you, but restorative medicine sometimes is not absence of pain. Got to go through it. They used to say when we were in the gym all the time, no pain, don't run from it. Don't run from it, but learn from it. God is able, he's able to keep you. This, 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 this passage helps us that it is a call to repentance. I'm glad that we are required in asking God's forgiveness to repent. Well, what is repentance? 
Some people in here may not know. Repentance is asking God and saying to God, I'm, si I'm sorry. Asking for his forgiveness. Now, we as humans, sometimes we offer our, our apologies and our apologies are not accepted. And that's okay, but at least you apologized. Amen. This call to repentance is as relevant today as it was in Peter's time. Reminding us of the need to examine our hearts. I don't think that as Christians we do enough examining. If we would examine ourselves as much as we criticize others, we would have a pretty good view of ourselves. Amen. Most of us don't have a good view of ourselves. One of the reasons why in order to have a good view, you've got to spend time on it. Amen. You've got to spend time reviewing and analyzing and considering, what am I doing wrong? And if we would spend more time there, God would bless us beyond our imagination. We too would be able to pick up our bed and walk. We too would be able to be true to God and true to ourselves. Peter's reminding us of the need to examine our hearts, acknowledge our sins, and turn to God in genuine repentance. I'm glad. I'm glad that God stands with us. God stands behind us. God stands ahead of us. God stands on either side of us. I'm glad. That's why God is my leaning post. Amen. I can't stand before you and suggest that I've been right always. What God has done in my life, Jesse, on numerous occasions, he's humbled me. When I lift my hands to God, I recognize that he's not only my maker, but he's my keeper. That God makes a way out of no way. All of us, all of us must, in order to be restored, in order for us to be restored, we must come before God in truth. We must give God our praise. We must give God all that we have. I'm not fading because I'm a little bit on the sick side, still trying to figure it all out. I'm fading because I want to be, speak slow so you'll understand the gravity of this moment and the moment in your life. Amen. I know why people get quiet in church. You want to know why? Because it's hitting too close to home. Yeah. Yeah, some, 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 some people just shout because they want to drown out everything else that's going around them and they get quiet. You can be quiet, and that's, and that's fine, but give God the glory. <laughs> Let me tell you that there is an urgency in our repentance. We're on the precipice and maybe in the midst of it. A messed up world. I'm concerned, you know, the other night we went to sleep woke up the next morning, and I thought that the news media was still talking about um, Hamas bombing Israel. And then I learned, as I listened, it was Iran. We're on the precipice of a serious time. And I'm saying to each of you, get it right, folks. Get it right. We don't know the hour nor the time when Jesus shall return. Get it right. Get it right. I don't worry so much 
about being criticized or being in a battle. Uh, I haven't seen this movie in a long time, but I'm reminded when I saw it for the first time, I got goosebumps in the production of Lion King. Simba, the young lion, the son of Mufasa. One day he went out and there was a conspiracy, in my interpretation, okay? There was a conspiracy because all the other lions, Simba's age, came out and thought they had him. Simba was always concerned about his roar. He didn't have that deep roar. His roar was more like this. And the other lions kind of laughed at him. And they kind of had Simba trapped. And Simba roar, roar. Simba never looked back. But the reason the other lions backed off, they did not see Mufasa back there. Y'all remember it. They didn't see him waiting for those other lions to act a fool. We may not see, not, not Mufasa, but we may not see Jesus standing behind us as others are attacking us. But I'm glad that he's the kind of Lord who has a big roar. Yeah. And when you are in trouble, he will roar on your behalf. Yeah. There is a revelation of restoration. I took my car to the car wash the other day, and it was pretty dirty. I declare that when cars get washed, they run better. <laughs> you ride around in a freshly washed car, car that's restored, that's gleaming. Feels like the engine understood, I just got washed. And I rejoice in knowing that I've been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm so glad that I know him and I found myself holding on to him even closer these days. I found myself in every step thanking God for keeping me, maybe it's just me, not you, for keeping me in my right mind. I wonder, I wonder sometimes, why, Lord? Why? <coughs> but God is in the blessing business. Let him restore you. Let him restore you. Just as he restored this man who had not walked for 40 plus years. And he restores him. He restores him to his rightful self. If you don't believe that, I just want you to try him. Try him one time, and he'll restore you. Because he's got work for you to do. He's got work for you to do. I'm too close now. Cutie Mae sings that song all the time. Too close now to turn around. Too close to let anybody tell me that I can't make it. Too close that he watches me every day. <coughs> I woke up the other day and I realized that I didn't lock my door. All night I laid in my bed. Some nights pillows watered by tears. My door was unlocked. Ain't God good? Yeah, here I am. 
Anybody could have walked in. Anybody's could have walked in. But I got must tell you that he has revealed to me, and I'm trying to do that to you, of his restorative powers. God is a mighty God. God bless you. I was singing that the other day. stand with me. This repentance that we're talking about is available to you. Give your life to Christ. If you're here and do not have a church home, first of all, do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you would like to have one and also you would like to be a part of our church, won't you come? Won't you come? If you can, just put your hand on the person next to you. Hold their hand or put your hand on the shoulder. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you, first of all, for that person whose hand we are holding or our hand is on. For it reminds us that, in fact, we need each other. God, we know that the revelation of restoration 
is not a one moment or one time act, but it is essential to us moving forward. Use us to your glory. Help us, O oh Lord, that we might be an example, showing others that we can make it. No matter how rough, no matter how hard, we can make it through. Now, Lord, we leave this place, but never, ever, ever leaving thy presence. Won't you continue to keep us, hold us, mold us, make us, and shape us into thine own image. And now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth and forevermore. And we all say, Amen, amen. God bless you.